And Young Jazz, this isn't the first time he's been accused of this, right? No, I believe the first time he was accused was in like 2003. And then I know also Mystical served like six years in prison already. And then there was another altercation that also happened in 2017. So this is the third thing that has happened to him regarding all that. Very few stories are as turbulent as that of famous rapper Mystical. It is a story about a man who managed to overcome the odds to become the hero in his own tale. However, owing to his mistakes and choices, he became the bad guy. Also, with the trial and imminent sentence awaiting Mystical, it just might be good by forever. Talk about success and tragedy, rise and fall. This story has it all. So stay with us as we take a look at the life of the famous rapper, Mystical. Mystical's previous crimes. On June 26, 2003, Mystical found himself entangled in a legal ordeal that would significantly alter the course of his life. The Grammy-nominated rapper pleaded guilty to charges of sexual battery and extortion, marking a distressing chapter in his career. This was, however, not his first brush with the law. Mystical had previously been arrested in 1998 for drug possession and gun possession. Although he served no time for the charges, they were a stain on his record that would not wash out. The incident unfolded with the victim, his hairstylist, accused Using Mystical, age 33 at the time, along with his two bodyguards, of forcing her to engage in oral sex. The motive behind this distressing episode was rooted in an accusation that she had stolen $80,000 worth of Mystical's checks, an accusation vehemently denied by the victim. Initially, Mystical contended that the encounter was consensual, but the discovery of a videotape at his residence, shortly after the charges were brought forth, shifted the narrative. Negotiations during the trial initially prevented the videotape from being entered as evidence, and Mystical opted for a plea bargain offered by the prosecution. The culmination of this legal saga occurred on January 15, 2004, when Mystical faced sentencing for the charges he had admitted to. He received a substantial six-year sentence in state prison after pleading guilty to sexually assaulting his hairstylist. The presiding judge, after viewing the videotape, took into account Mystical's two prior arrests, one for drug possession and another for gun possession. The two bodyguards involved in the incident also pleaded guilty to sexual battery. Leland Pokey Ellis, age 37, received received a three-year prison term, while Versi V. Carter, age 35, was sentenced to four years. The courtroom, presided over by Judge Tony Marabella, witnessed the sentencing, and Mystical, having pleaded guilty to sexual battery, was escorted away in handcuffs. Judge Marabella expressed his conviction that Mystical exhibited a belief in being above the law and capable of meeting out justice independently. This sentiment played a pivotal role in determining the severity of the sentence. In addition to the sexual battery charges, Mystical also pleaded guilty to extortion, a count for which he received a five year probationary period. The legal repercussions extended to financial compensation as well. Court records revealed that Mystical had paid the victim a sum of $350,000, with $300,000 of it borrowed from his record label. A letter in the court record suggested that this monetary restitution, along with Mystical's guilty plea, were part of his efforts to make amends for the distress caused to all parties involved. All of this was a sharp contrast to his recognition for his contributions to the music industry. This is evident in the fact that his album, Tarantula, which had earned a nomination for Best Rap Album at the Grammy Awards in 2003 didn't make waves as it should due to the serious legal implications stemming from the sexual battery case. 2005, federal misdemeanor counts of failing to file tax returns for 1998 and 1999. In August 2005, Mystical faced additional legal challenges while serving time for the state sexual battery and extortion charges earlier mentioned. During his incarceration, he was federally charged with two misdemeanor counts of failing to file tax returns for 1999 and 1999. This led to a subsequent federal court proceeding on January 12, 2006, where he was convicted of these tax offenses. Despite the conviction, Mystical was granted the concession to serve his one-year federal sentence concurrently with his ongoing six-year state sentence. His time behind bars during this period occurred at Louisiana's Elaine Hunt Correctional Center. Continuing through the legal hurdles, Mystical encountered disappointment on January 19, 2006, as he was denied parole. So even though he had completed the one-year year federal sentence for tax offenses, he remained in custody to fulfill the six-year sentence for the Louisiana state convictions. This development led to confusion among fans who erroneously believed he had been released on parole. Fast forward to January 14, 2010, Mystical's extended period of incarceration came to an end with his release from custody. Unfortunately, his re-entry into society was marked
marked by the burden of being registered as a sex offender, which presented an ongoing legal and societal challenges in the aftermath of his prison term. Years earlier, Master P had warned the young rappers on his label about avoiding trouble. He tried to tell us, but we were arrogant punks. Can't tell us nothing, Mystical said. When I saw him, I had to tell him. I wish I had listened to some of what you told me, because it could have avoided me six years of agony. While anyone would have thought Mystical would have learned his lessons from his ordeal and steered clear of having any more trouble with the law. Well, this was not the case. On February 22, 2012, Mystical faced another legal setback when he was arrested following a dispute with his domestic partner resulting in a misdemeanor charge of domestic abuse battery. After spending nine days in detention, he was released on bail. However, his legal troubles continued, and on April 16th of the same year, Mystical received a three-month jail sentence for violating the terms of his probation, which had been imposed after his release from prison in January 2010. Taking into account the nine days he had already served, his actual confinement amounted to 81 days. Commencing his sentence on May 14th, Mystical was incarcerated at the East Baton Rouge Parish Jail. During his time behind bars, he appeared in court not only to address the domestic battery charges, but also for a hearing related to determining child support payments for his two youngest children. Once again, Mystical's release from jail occurred in August 2012, providing some respite from the legal entanglements that had characterized this particular phase of his life. But in spite of this relief, the rapper's journey continued to be marked by this pattern of legal problems, which contributed to a tale of both personal and professional struggles. For Mystical, the brief time he spent again in prison and the intervening five years seemed like a positive sign that his dance with the justice system had come to an end. But it was not going to be so easy. On August 21st, 2017, once again rapper Mystical found himself in a tango with the justice system. This time he turned himself into the Caddo Parish Sheriff's Department and was subsequently arrested and charged with <laughs> Mystical, it seems, could not learn a lesson from his past convictions and was faced again with accusations of sexually assaulting a woman in Shreveport Louisiana on October 22, 2016. According to reports from news media, sources, Shreveport police issued an arrest warrant for Mystical and another individual, Averwan Holman, on the Friday preceding the rapper's surrender. Holman, who was also charged with first-degree had been arrested on the same day. The alleged incident occurred at a Shreveport casino, coinciding with Mystical's Legends of Southern Hip Hop concert in the city. Investigators claimed to have gathered evidence at the scene that implicated both Mystical and Holman in the reported attack. In addition to the primary charges, the police were actively seeking another individual, Tanikia Wofford, who was accused of attempting to persuade the victim to drop charges against Mystical and Holman. Wofford faced charges of accessory after the fact to first-degree rape. Things were not looking good for Mystical, whose troubled history included prior arrests and convictions. The gravity of the accusations and the apparent connection to a public event added layers of complexity to the situation and drew attention from both the media and fans. As Mystical faced this new legal battle, the public awaited further developments in the case. Unlike like the last time, though, Mystical maintained that he was innocent and fought to regain his freedom. His legal team stuck with him and succeeded in getting him released on a $3 million bond after spending nearly one and a half years in custody on the charge. Mystical, who was at that time 48, expressed his relief upon release, acknowledging the test of faith and describing his journey as a walk of faith. He was grateful for his change in circumstance, comparing it to a cocoon from which he could emerge as a hero. Joel Pierce, Mystical's attorney, shared that a trial was scheduled for May of that year, expressing confidence in clearing the rapper's name. Pierce asserted that upon closer examination of the facts, he anticipates a dismissal. Mystical's legal team claimed to possess sufficient evidence, including video footage that supported the rapper's innocence in the alleged crimes. They believe that once the district attorney reviews the case, it will become apparent that Mystical was not culpable. A break in the case came not for the prosecution, but for Mystical, when on the 17th of December, 2020, the charges were dismissed. The dismissal was attributed to a lack of evidence. This was awesome news for Mystical, who had been in this particular battle for three years. Unfortunately for the rapper, this particular legal battle cost him his career. Even after release on bond, Mystical could barely find work. The dismissal of the charge charges was supposed to be like the dark clouds being lifted away from him, but it was obvious to Mystical that it was not going to be so easy. Life in prison? Any fan of the hip-hop or rap genre would not need any convincing of the talent Mystical displayed in his music. In an interview in April 2021, after the rape charges were dropped, he talked about turning his life around and taking a different approach with his music. But come 2022, Mystical still had nothing out on the streets or in the record labels. Neither did he have any music he was working on since 2017, except for the few featuring deals and other artists 
songs you got. In fact, if you were into making bets, you would have been very disappointed if you placed a bet on Mystical's music career experiencing a mysterious bounce back. But as 2022 turned into the second half, for the third time in two decades, Mystical was once again arrested for And again, Mystical renewed his acquaintance with jail on July 31st, 2022. This time it was for more than just first degree He faced the following additional charges. Simple criminal damage to property, false imprisonment, domestic abuse, battery and strangulation, and simple robbery. The world was shocked by the news. Even his fans were hysterical as they kept asking how this could be happening to their beloved rapper all over again. The disappointment was everywhere, but the fans rallied and started demanding his release, confident that just like the last time he was innocent. However, things were not looking good for Mystical this time, as this incident of involved reportedly the mother of his son, Million Tyler. She had been co-parenting with Mystical for over a decade until their breakup a couple of years ago. The troubling episode unfolded when his baby mama unexpectedly visited Mystical's house to discuss past finances related to their son, who is now an adult. Despite having a restraining order against her, they engaged in an argument during the discussion, which primarily revolved around financial support for their son. Mystical, who was 51 years old at the time, briefly left the room and returned with a chance demeanor and reportedly made unwanted advances towards her. The arrest warrant issued the next day detailed the alleged assault, including physical injuries such as cuts, bruises, and hair yanked from the victim's scalp. The accusations also included mystical punching her, pulling her braids, taking her phone and keys, choking her to the point of breathlessness, and forcibly raping her. Mystical's legal team vehemently disagreed with the allegations, asserting that the Baba Mama fabricated the story after not receiving the $1,000 she requested. They also highlighted the existence of a restraining order against her and contended that she threatened to accuse him of rape if he did not comply with her financial demand. Deputies investigating the case, however, found some of the woman's braids, an earring, and a broken nail in Mystical's home. The victim's injuries, including bruises and cuts, were consistent with the reported assault. So, with these easily confirmable pieces of evidence, Mystical was subsequently arrested and charged with first-degree false imprisonment, domestic abuse battery by strangulation, simple robbery, and drug charges. Despite pleading not guilty to all charges, Mystical was denied bond and remained in jail due to his extensive criminal record and the victim's belief that he posed a continued threat. And if convicted of the rape charge, Mystical faces a life sentence. The rapper continues to be behind bars awaiting trial, which has faced delays. As part of the facts surrounding the case, three weeks before the reported incident, another woman had informed a man living on Mystical Street that the rapper had assaulted her. Deputies were called to the scene, but it remains unclear why they did not speak to Mystical at that time. This revelation only further adds a twist to Mystical. Mystical's legal situation, indicating that the rapper was unrepentant in his attitude towards women. Things really do not look good for Mystical right now. His trial for this case has continually been pushed further and further away for multiple reasons. These multiple postponements, alongside the denial of his bail, has left the rapper incarcerated since his arrest. Mystical's long-term lawyer, Joel Pierce, says that Mystical remains upbeat and is looking forward to proving his innocence in a court of law. But to really understand just how shaky the rapper's case is, let us take a look at Louisiana rape and sexual battery laws and how they apply to Mystical, most especially as this is not his first brush with the law about such matters. In Louisiana, sexual assault is categorized into two main offenses and sexual battery. Both offenses involve engaging in sexual conduct without lawful consent, and conviction for either offense results in mandatory sex offender registration. In Mystical's first case, which was a sexual battery offense, he could have faced a jail term of 10 to 99 years, depending on circumstances. So from observation, it is obvious that the judge in his first case exercised some lenient discretion, as Mystical could have got to serve a whole lot more years than he got. Also, his pleading guilty to the charges may have helped him get a lessened prison sentence of just six years back in 2005. Now coming to Mystical's second and third cases, these fall under the offense category and represents the more serious type of legal consequence. With this, we can better understand why it was fortunate Mystical's second case ended up not going anywhere as it got dismissed due to a lack of evidence. However, while this third case of his is still pending, based on what we have learned from Louisiana state law under which he is facing charges of first degree, if he is found guilty and sentenced, it will be mandatory life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. That is one of the harshest punishments under the law, and it would be a goodbye to his already struggling music career if Mystical is convicted under this law. The rapper does have some defenses open to him, though. The usual defenses available to criminal defendants in cases like this are claiming someone else committed the crime or arguing consensual activity. In addition to this, some of his supporters have come up with some speculations that he could have been set up, going by the evidence available. However, it will be hard to explain away why the braids, an earring, and a broken nail were in Mystical's home. Were they planted? 
arrested? Did the woman alleging the assault know they were there beforehand if they don't belong to her? These and many more questions are some of the things Mystical's defense team would have to figure out to get the rapper free. Owing to his history as a convicted sex offender, Mystical was required to register as sex offender in Louisiana as failure to register incurs additional criminal penalties. This may play seriously into how the judge will handle this case if or when it gets to trial. Remember how the judge in his first case said he viewed himself above the law? That also could come back and haunt him into prison for life. But who was mystical before his recurrent run-in with the law? Does it have something to do with his childhood? And most importantly, how did he become famous? Life and Times of Mystical Born Michael Tyler on September 22, 1970 in New Orleans, Louisiana, Mystical was the second child and the first male child. He already had an older sister, Michelle, and soon after a younger brother, Maurice. His parents must have really liked the letter M and Mystical followed the trend by giving himself a stage name that begins with M. When Mystical was seven, the first of the tragedies that would dog his life happened. His father, who ran a small neighborhood store, died due to complications from a blood clot. The Tyler household was then thrown into mourning and money troubles. But even in the midst of those financial challenges, Mystical and his siblings experienced love and care from their mother, Marie Tyler. She did all she could to steer them away from a life of crime and constantly motivated them to excel in school while also encouraging their regular church attendance. Despite the family's economic hardships, Mystical didn't view himself as poor thanks to his mother's efforts in shielding him from the harsh reality of their circumstances. Mystical's journey into rap and fame began not on a stage, but in Walter S. Cohen High School. He had already started dabbling in rhymes, but it was there at high school that he got exposed to the competitive fire of the art. One day, a hallway encounter turned into a rap battle as a fellow rapper spit bars that challenged Mystical's flow. That clash sparked a realization. Rap wasn't just about storytelling, it was about boasting also about proving your lyrical prowess while blowing your own horn. Facing various challenges did not slow Mystical down though, and so he began carving his way to fame in New Orleans scene. Ironically, his first taste of recognition came not also from rhymes, but from his breakdance moves under the name of Mystical Mike with his crew, the Con. Verse. Mystical's journey eventually led him to connect with Beats by the Pound producer, KLC. As the popularity of dancing started to wane, Mystical fully immersed himself in the world of rapping in New Orleans. KLC, standing at the forefront as a producer and DJ for a local group called 39 Posse, quickly recognized Mystical's unique style. Impressed, he brought Mystical into the studio to produce and record his early demo tapes. Mystical initially chose to pursue further education after graduating from high school. However, as his rap career struggled to gain momentum, he found himself yearning to contribute more productively to his dreams. However, in a surprising turn of events, Mystical made the decision to enlist in the United States Army. Joining the military provided Mystical with a new set of challenges and experiences. Yet, his passion for hip-hop persisted. While in the army, he continued to nurture his musical aspirations, even as he fulfilled his duties to his country as a combat engineer during Operation Desert Storm. While he was over there, KLC and his group, 39 Posse, dropped an album titled 39 Automatic. The revelation of this release marked a pivotal moment for Mystical, serving as a catalyst that ignited his determination to pursue a career as a rapper. Upon completing his service in the army, Mystical returned Returned to New Orleans with a renewed sense of purpose, determined to sustain his dream and make ends meet. He took on various jobs, including a stint as a security guard at a shopping center. Mystical also sought the guidance of his former boss, KLC, with the belief that he could assist him in transforming his musical passion into a career. Despite KLC's busy schedule with other hip-hop acts, he welcomed Mystical back and made a promise to produce an album for him. However, before this could materialize, KLC needed to complete his work with 39 Posse and Magnolia Slim, later known as Soul Slim. During this waiting period, Mystical received a golden opportunity, an invitation to open an outdoor concert for Run DMC and Doug E. Fresh at the TRM Center. At the event, Mystical had no idea that Leroy Precise Edwards, aka Sicey, the house producer and executive for Big Boy Records, was in the audience. Mystical's performance, featuring a song titled I'm Not That alongside his sister Michelle singing background vocals on the chorus, impressed Edwards, earning them both a contract with Big Boy Records. This marked the beginning of the developing relationship relationship between Mystical and Big Boy Records. Following the deal, Mystical threw himself into working on his debut album titled Mystical, which was released on June 14, 1994. This milestone represented a significant achievement for Mystical as he had overcome the struggles of securing not only a record deal, but also releasing a full album. It goes without saying that his collaboration with Big Boy Records in no little way marked a turning point in Mystical's career, paving the way for further accomplishments in the rap scene. It is at this time the checkered pattern of this story begins to establish itself. Tragedy struck once again, and it put a major damper on Mystical's success and even his 24th birthday celebrations. On the night of September 22, 1994, Mystical's 
older sister, Michelle, was brutally murdered. She was stabbed and strangled. In his own words, my mama couldn't go in there. My little brother couldn't go in there. He was too young. The best person suited for that situation to find her was myself. I had to be the one to find her. And it doesn't matter how much I attain and how many accolades I achieve, I'll never have it all without her. This personal loss had a lasting impact on Mystical, influencing subsequent songs dedicated to her memory. Tracks like Dedicated to Michelle Tyler and Murder, along with Murder 2, Shine, and Murder 3, all served as touching references reflecting the pain and emotional weight Mystical carried after her passing. The next year, 1995, Mystical found himself entangled in conflicts with fellow New Orleans rappers from UNLV and the BG's hip-hop groups who were affiliated with the rival Cash Money label. The battleground for this musical beef was set with diss tracks like Drag Em In The River by UNLV and Big Boy by the BGs, all targeting Mystical. Responding to these provocations, Mystical crafted his counterattacks in the form of tracks like Beware and Here I Go, both prominently featured on his second album, Mind of Mystical. Over time, Mystical would undergo a reconciliation process with Lil Wayne, which transformed their previous feud into a collaborative partnership. As Mystical navigated his musical journey with notable shifts, he signed with Jive Records and released Mind of Mystical in 1995. The subsequent year then marked a pivotal move as he joined Master P's No Limit, a powerhouse in the rap industry. The year 1997 saw the release of Unpredictable, showcasing Mystical's versatility and contributing to the blowout success of No Limit Records. During this phase, Mystical actively participated in the No Limit movement, making significant contributions to various albums released between 1997 and the early 2000s. His collaboration with Mariah Carey on her Rainbow album reflected his expanding influence beyond New Orleans. In 1998, Mystical released his album Ghetto Fabulous, which would be his final final album with No Limit Records. The album received positive reviews and further solidified his position in the industry. Mystical's unique flow and energetic delivery continued to captivate audiences, earning him recognition as one of the most dynamic voices in hip-hop. Throughout his career, Mystical also collaborated with other notable artists, including Ludacris on the hit single Move and Lil Jon and the East Side Boys on I Don't Give a these collaborations showcased his ability to seamlessly blend his style with other artists, creating memorable and impactful tracks. His climb continued with the release of Let's Get Ready in 2000. This album featured standout tracks like Danger Been So Long and the Neptunes produced hit Shake Your Ass. Let's Get Ready debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, marking a significant milestone in Mystical's career. It was around this time in 2004 that Mystical's career began to be peppered with what was to become several legal challenges. These issues put a severe hold on his musical accomplishment as he was convicted and went to prison for six years. Post-prison, Mystical embarked on a journey to reclaim his position in the music scene. In 2010, he headlined a concert at the Mahalia Jackson Theater of the Performing Arts on Mardi Gras, signifying a triumphant return to the stage. His first song after release, an underground track with former No Limit label mate Fiend titled I Don't Like You, demonstrated Mystical's eagerness to re-establish his presence in the industry. In addition to this, collaborations played a key role in Mystical's post prison career. A few weeks after his release, he collaborated with Atlanta-based New Orleans-born R&B artist Lloyd on Set Me Free, featuring a music video shot in New Orleans. This collaboration exemplified Mystical's ability to seamlessly integrate into contemporary music landscapes while staying true to his New Orleans roots. In 2010, Mystical released a promotional song called Paper Cuts, featuring Fiend and Lil Wayne. And jumping into 2011, Mystical's career took another significant turn when he and Busta Rhymes were signed to Cash Money Records by Birdman on November 16th. This move aligned Mystical with one of the most prominent labels in the industry and set the stage for his continued musical endeavors. 2014 saw Mystical contributing to Mark Ronson's Uptown Special, recording the track Feel Right, which showcased his adaptability and versatility in collaborating with artists across genres. Continuing his collaborative efforts, Mystical featured on Stevie Stone's single Rain Dance with Tech 9 from the 2015 release Malta Bend. Come January 2016, Mystical performed in shows in Bahrain and Bulgaria with Danny, which helped to expand his global footprint. The following month, he went on a tour across the United States, continuing his commitment to live performances and connecting with his audience. In fact, it was just as if his time in prison never happened. In April 2016, Mystical was featured on Just a Lil Thick by Trinidad James, further solidifying his presence in contemporary music. This collaboration added yet another dimension to Mystical's body of work, showcasing his ability to seamlessly blend into evolving musical landscapes. Also, in 2017, he was featured on FYM by Joyner Lucas on Joyner's mixtape, 
2009, which went on to be a commercial success after its release. Whichever turn Mystical's rape allegations case takes when he is eventually goes to trial, it just might be goodbye to the once successful rapper or his music career. So what are your thoughts about Mystical and the possible jail term he faces? Let us know in the comments. For more videos like this, click on the cards on your screen now.